using her design pattern. <laughs> One, two, three. Hello, um, my name is Armand. Um, you might have seen me around before. I'm one of the um, organizers of North Girls. And today I'm going to talk to you about um, cross-domain dom cross communication. Um, but the title is a little bit different. Um, so I'm saying um, in the beginning, don't get, don't get excited because I didn't create a new design pattern, but I just felt like I'm going to create a new design pattern. So um, I'm just going to show you what I discovered and um, you'll probably have better understanding what I'm talking about um, through the presentation. So as I said, my name is Arman. I work for Red Hat as a software engineer um, in the customer portal front-end development team. And um, I spent a few years um, on development on backend, and I can say like I'm pretty new on all this subject of um, front end development. <coughs> this is why every day I feel like I am creating a new design pattern, and then I realize that it already exists, and there are like thousands of results on Google and Stock Stack Overflow. And so, okay. Um, so um, I'm currently working on a project uh, which we use Hypothesis as our base solution. So Hypothesis is an open source project. Um, so I, I provided the GitHub link here and if you want to check it out, definitely I really urge you to go and check it out if you look for some exciting project. Um, it's really challenging and um, there are different technologies like Angular and Redux together and there are some jQuery and CoffeeScript and it's just a bunch of different technologies and it's really, really challenging and exciting. So, um, so we, we use this project as our base solution. I'm just going to show you what it is and uh, before I dive into this uh, cross-domain communication. So okay, this is the hypothesis and this is the um, the main page of this project. And so Hypothesis basically is an open source project that allows you to create annotation on your documents. So like if you have PDF documents and you can create um, the annotations and if you um, have like um, all these websites and everything so you can create an annotations on the website as well. And um, I don't have much, uh, much information about the PDF and other documents. Um, but uh, working with the um, hypothesis on the web uh, pages, it's, it's really straightforward and it's really um, easy to use it. And you can, just, you can just use this hypothesis for your personal references as well. So like, the only thing that you need to do is downloading the browser extension of the hypothesis. And um, after you download it, there's going to be like a small icon here. So, and you click it, and it will just be enabled. And you also need to have like a um, an account to create an annotation here. So like how it works, it's really straightforward. So I'm just gonna highlight some text on the page, and then I just create annotate. So helping one million developers exit there, <laughs> and I just feel like I'm not the only one. <laughs> 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 Okay, so um, yeah, these are the details, but you can post it to you or public. There are some groups that you can choose here. So um, I was working on this project, and as I said, like I am coming from back uh, backend background, so I don't have much. I didn't have much information uh, about all these front end concept, and um, I was just trying to understand, like. When I highlight a text here, and when I create annotate, like how this text is coming here, and it's just they are so different domain. The one is the Stack Overflow domain, and the other one is the Hypothesis domain. So they are different domains, and how they are passing this information between each other. And as I said again, like I'm coming from the backend develop. Uh, back, uh, what is it called? The uh, backend development background. I felt like similar to APIs because um, in a in a in a way that you know you're passing some information between server and the client, and 
there is some passing information here between the application. It's similar to API, but it's not API because like when you create, uh, when you're working with an API, so what do you do? You create some um, get post delete request to the specific endpoint and you end up uh, having a bunch of data like the JSON or the XML, whatever. It is again similar to this one, but I'm not fetching a bunch of data. I'm just passing through some information and I and after I create an annotation, I'm also passing like when I hover it, this page knows that I, I hover this feedback. So there's definitely a passing through information between these applications. This might be an obvious um, thing maybe for lots of people, but as, as I said, like I'm not really um, into, I wasn't really into the front end development and didn't have much information, I just didn't understand. And then I, and at that time I didn't know how to search my problem on Google as well. And I just dig into the project, like spent quite a few times and quite a few hours and try to understand like how it works, how it works. And then I realized that this hypothesis team wrote a bridge between the, the page, they call it guest page, and they call it sidebar. So they wrote a bridge between the real page, the guest page, and the sidebar, and they established the communication through the bridge. And when I realized this, I felt so excited because it's just so different. And then um, I didn't. I, I, I realized that this is an iframe. I didn't even know that this was an iframe either. And then I was so excited and I called my colleague and I was about to share what I found. And then um, he's a really awesome person and he's really experienced and knowledgeable. And I told him, hey, I figured out how um, this page and this high file communication and he's basically working on the back end. He um, actually didn't spend much time on the front end. So he doesn't know how it works actually. But he said, oh, did they use like a, a bridge kind of using the iframe and you um, like establish the bridge between the page and iframe? And I was like, how do you know this? <laughs> and he said, well, this is kind of a common solution for this kind of problems. And I was like, well, I missed it again. <laughs> so this is what I put my title, I created a new design pattern because I felt like this is, this is a new thing. Of course, I didn't write this bridge, but I felt like if I work on this bridge with the hypothesis team, if I make a generic solution, I can use this. Like, it can be a design pattern. And so, I felt quite like, like this after I talked with my friend. It was kind of a disappointment. But this was a sad story for me, but this is also a funny story. So um, even though it is exist, I, it, I just find it, um, it is so interesting concept. So I just wanted to learn how they're communicating. Okay, so yeah, there, there's a bridge here, but like how they actually wrote this bridge. And then I come into the concept of this cross-domain communication. So basically cross-domain communication means that um, communicating between, uh, between different uh, domains. Um, so <coughs> there are actually two, um, two um, subjects or concepts to evaluate this, um, this cross-domain communication. The first one is um, probably you all know about is the cross-origin sh uh, resource sharing. It is um, when you work with APIs, you probably um, you're pro probably familiar with this concept, and it is sharing resources between uh, different domains, and um, usually it is between um, client and the server, and um, you work with the HTTP method, all these get, put, post, lead, and then. Um, of course, um, not, not, ev not everyone can uh, post or push or delete whatever the command that you're going to use to the specific endpoint. So there needs to be some security, um, some security policies. So you can do the security policy setting the proper HTTP headers. So, like, if you work with APIs and fetch some data and some um, put some data, you're probably familiar to this concept. But um, 
we're not going to talk about this today. We're going to talk about the cross-domain messaging. So, the as I said, like it, it really felt similar to working with APIs, but it's actually not. And uh, when you're working with API, you work with um, all this communication between usually server and the client. But in cross-domain messaging, the communication is between the window object. So you have like one main um, uh, frame, and then you have like iframe, you have pop-up. So between all these objects, you can do the communication using the concept of cross-domain messaging. So compared to this cause, it, it's still a different concept, but in the sense of sharing information, it's cross-domain communication. I'm gonna, I'm gonna call it both of them cross-domain communication. But um, it's just so easy compared to all these other resource sharing. So there's one main uh, method that we use, the post message. And then I'm gonna show you an example later, and it will probably make you a little bit um, um, better understanding, but um, we have one main um, method that we post our message and then the other application we need to listen to this message. So the idea is just so basic, security is just so straightforward. <coughs> and so yeah, this is our main method. So basically this one is securely sending messages between window objects on different domains. And syntax is really easy. So the target window is um, the window that you are going to send the data to, and post message is our method and message your data. Target origin is um, the origin that you are going to send the data to. So like if you are going to send your information to an iframe, you need to specify iframe origin here. So there is an option that you can just write star. This means that you can send this information to anywhere, uh, anywhere on internet. Every single page can accept this one. And this is really improper about some security purposes. So, before coming this one, I just want to show you a quick example. It's not really exciting, but it just explains like how it works. So yeah, I have one local host, it's not JS. And um, so like oops sorry. So I'm just gonna show you the page. It's just basic input and buttons. So I have one thing here which is an iframe. And as you see the iframe source is coming from somewhere else. So it's not my domain, it's something else. So now I'm gonna try to pass some information to this iframe. And again it's not really exciting, but it works. So say hi, hey. Now we actually pass information to somewhere else, and um, and the code is just so easy. And I will show you. So this is my HTML, just basic, and iframe. My iframe is in this domain, and so JS is um, up in my server. And then um, this is oops, going down. So these are just picking my elements, and any click, I call this function. Basically, can can anyone see? Yeah. So basically, this is the line. So this is my iframe that I pick. I'm sending this message that I write on, that I wrote on, on the input field. I'm passing this information to this iframe on this origin. So if I delete this one, if I write star, as I said again, you can send this information on any iframe, um, but um, it will just be not really secure. So this is how I send the data. How about like um, listening the data? So okay. <coughs> Is that the same? Okay. 
I should just, oh, okay. So I just lost my atom. I don't know what happened. So I will just show um, here. So this is my iframe source. And I'm just going to open this. And then you will <coughs> see. Okay. So this is um, what I have on the iframe part. So um, I listen the message event, and then any the message event I receive the message, and it's it's really straightforward. When I have this um, the message event, and I am just checking my origin, I know um, the um, I know the average origin. I know my message, which which um, domain my message comes from, and. If this is not the case, just return it. And then, um, if this is the case, yeah, please um, show this message on this um, my paragraph. Basically, yeah, basically it is, and it's really straightforward. And this is obviously it's very basic example about. You got the point, right? It's um, post the message, listen the message, and that's all. So. I just try to visualize what I show here. This really bothers me. Like, <laughs> going down. Okay, um, so I got inspired about this handmade um, drawing from Anna. <laughs> it's not really, this is my first hand draw, um, hand draw probably. It's not really good, but um, I just started. So um, this is the main page that um, my local host and all this input and everything, the iframe is here. And then this is the iframe, is on another domain, which is amam.com. And basically, you're gonna um, you're gonna post this message to this iframe on this domain, and then you are gonna catch this message um, on the different domain. So yeah, this is this is just it. <laughs> And yeah, what about the security? Because like, if you're gonna, if if you are able to send any message to any origin, um, to any iframe on the internet, so how is it gonna work with the security? It's just so basic. I like this question, and I think I got this um, from um, Mozilla, um, the Mozilla Dev. So they just basically ask: Do you expect to receive um, a message from other side? No, don't add any message events. Don't any, like, don't listen any message event. Yes. Okay. So verify the sender's identity, the one that we the event origin. If it is not coming from the origin that we expect, just return it and don't be anything. And as I um, demonstrate, like a real basic example, I didn't check the um, the syntax of the receive message, but some people um, might try to send some malicious data, you know, some dangerous scripts and everything to your application. So you also need to check the, um, the syntax of the message that you expect. This is another step um, about security. And yeah, like what about the browser compatibility? I think it's pretty good. At least we have EA, <laughs> so that's good. Um, just keep that in your mind, this is not the method of the post message. This is actually the post message um, method on cross-domain communication. Because I think, I'm not really sure, but I, as far as I read, the post message was around for a long time. But I think you weren't able to use this, um, uh, having the communication cross-domain, over the cross-domain. So this is, shows the post message over the cross-domain. I think yeah, that's it. Thank you.